Greetings in the name of Jesus. Welcome to Christian Family Worship Center. I want to welcome our online watchers and visitors. That you'll be blessed at home just as well being blessed here. Be connected, amen? Stay connected to the Word of God. Open up your Bibles with me to the book of Joshua, chapter 1. I want to start with verse 7. As I'm reading this, I can be preparing to give your tithes and your offerings this morning. We're going to collect that in a minute. You want to be connected to God supernaturally? That's one way to do it. Amen? Amen. He promises to open up the windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing on you. You will not have enough room to receive it, and he will rebuke the devourer for your sake. That's his promise to you. That's the word of God. So if you want supernatural results, you've got to become obedient to the word of God. Amen? Obedience is better than sacrifice. In other words, if God isn't interested in all your sacrifices, interested in your obedience. But listen to what this says. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do. He says, observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper that doesn't just mean financially. That means in every area of your life. Amen. Amen. That you'll act wisely, have good success, prosper, and wherever you go. When you go to work, you prosper. When you go to church, you prosper. When you go on vacation, you prosper. When you go fishing, you catch fish. Amen. Prosper. You bring increase in your relationships. You bring increase in everything you do. But you've got to use your faith and you've got to have courage. Amen? Amen. Then he says this. He, 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 he confirms this over and over again. This book of the law, the Bible, right here. Guys, the answer is right here. If y'all don't know it, this, this is the answer. And the world and the devil and people who live by the flesh do not want this book to exist. Amen. Because it tells them how they're supposed to live and they don't want to live the way the word of God says. So therefore they say the word of God is... Uh, intolerable. It's not, not going to be able to help you. It's out of date. Let me tell you, Jesus Christ is on the throne. Amen. And he's going to stay on the throne. Yeah. He's never going to be dethroned. He's never going to be crucified again. They killed him once not knowing that they were actually offering up the greatest sacrifice. Amen. 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 Then he says this, uh, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. So you're supposed to be speaking it all the time. But you shall meditate. That means your mind gets involved. You shall meditate in it day and night that you, that you may observe to what? To do according to all that is written therein. For then you will make your way prosperous. And then you will have not just success. You're going to have good success. That sounds good to me. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you. Ooh, this stuff is so full of good stuff, isn't it? The Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Yes. God is with me. God is with me. Amen. Fear not, for I am with you, says the Lord. Yes. Fear not, for I am with you. Is God with you? Go and say, God is with me. And I'm with God. I'm on God's team. Amen? Now listen, I was talking about Moses at the beginning. Moses, Moses had a little messed up life. Y'all know he had a little kind of messed up life at the beginning. It was rough for him. I mean, he, whenever he was born, he was born in a time whenever they'd taken the baby boys and thrown them into the River Nile. They were killing them. But they put him in the river Nile in a little ark, that, a basket that they put pitch on that it wouldn't sink, and sent him down. Mama, yep. You want to preach this morning? Go, go ahead. She's excited. Well, you know what? Pharaoh's daughter takes him out of the water. He lives in the king's palace or Pharaoh's palace. But he's a Hebrew. And he's amongst all of the, the Egyptians. And he begins to see that the, the Hebrew people were being oppressed because they were slaves of the Egyptians. Amen. Let me tell you, there was a lot of animosity between them. Y'all know that, right? Yes. Yes. And, and so y'all know there's a lot of animosity between people today, too. Amen. 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 
And so anger rises up in his heart one day. He sees one of the Hebrews getting mistreated by, by the Egyptian. And he goes out there and he's going to try to take things in his own hands. Let me tell you all something. You do not want to take anything in your own hands. You better start giving it to God. Amen. Come on, let's get some good amens going here. Because when you take it in your own hands, you got you a problem. Because your hand is not as big as God's hand. Amen. And we're not going to be taking things in our own hands. We're going to be... Giving it to God, hearing what God says and doing it God's way because the answer is in the word of God by the Holy Spirit who will lead you and guide you into all the truth. Amen. So what does he do? In his fury and anger, he kills the Egyptian. Thinking he did something good after that, but he didn't really think so because what, what did he do? He tried to hide it. He, he buried him. But the next day, he saw two of his Hebrews but it's fighting each other. You know, people fight each other no matter what. It's called selfishness. And he sees the two Hebrews uh, arguing, okay? And he goes and says, well, y'all are brother. Why, why are you arguing? And, and they turn and he says, who made you judge? We know you killed that Egyptian. I'm paraphrasing. And it, he got afraid and he took off and he went into the backside of the wilderness. He ran. And back there he got married. He had children, became the son-in-law of Jethro, and he became a shepherd. He was, he was, you know, taking care of Jethro's sheep. Forty years. Amen. How many know when you get married and you have children, it can change your way of thinking? Amen. Amen. And, and guess what? When you read the whole story, if you know about Moses, he married an Ethiopian woman. Uh oh, so I'm not going to get into too much detail about what the Ethiopian woman is, but because his sister got mad at him because he was married to an Ethiopian woman. See, there's been racism and this kind of schism since the beginning of time. Cain and Abel, brothers were mad at him. Cain killed his brother, Abel. Amen. But one day, say, but one day. one day. Come on, and one day. God can change your life, change your destiny, change what's going on. And one day, Moses is walking, and he sees a burning bush. Did you have your burning bush experience? I did. I encountered God one day that changed my entire life from that day forward when I bowed my knee and gave my heart to the Lord Jesus Christ and said yes to what God was calling me. And all he was doing was calling me to receive forgiveness of my sin because I was a sinner. And to become a son. And now after that he called me to become a, a, a disciple. And then a minister. And he sent me to go. And you, you got to keep obeying. And it's a whole process that's involved in doing that. And Moses is walking. Burning bush. It's not consumed. So he goes to see. And guess who it is? He encounters God. And when he encounters God, you know, God says, come. And he takes off his shoes. He said, this is holy ground. And then he says, I've called you to go and, and deliver my people. And Moses is like, who am I going to say sent me? And he says, I am. Tell him I am sent you. I am that I am. And then, you know, the whole story goes on. Moses says, I can't do it. I'm not good. I don't speak well. He might have had a stutter or whatever. And he wasn't eloquent. And, and you know what? God did a few little things with Moses right there. He, he put his hand in his coat. And when he pulled it out, it was full of leprosy. Then he put it back in and it was healed. When you're dealing with God, God will do whatever it takes to get your attention. And if I can get through all what I got to share with you today and get some of these notes out, we're going to find out that some things going on in our world, in our lives, is God's trying to get our attention. Amen? Amen? Yes. So the same person now had an encounter with God, and now he's got a, God's got a purpose for his life, and he's going to go and deliver the children of Israel. And y'all know, just Moses goes on, and he, he wrote the first few books of the Bible. God gave him all these words when he was on the mountain. Have you had your experience like I did, or like, Moses did. Have you? It, it's not going to be a, a fiery. Uh, uh, it might not be, you know, a bush burning. But whatever it is, has God? Have you had a real encounter with God? 
Or is it still just religion? It's que sera, sera, whatever it will be, will be. It took 40 years for God to reform and transform uh, Moses so he could have that encounter, so he could go forward and do what God called him to do. So we don't need to get in a rush. We need to get humble and, and put all of our, 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 our hope in God, our faith in God, and hear what God has to say and understand that the world doesn't know God, so it can't hear God. Amen? Praise God, I'm already preaching. Y'all don't let me forget to take the offering before we dismiss. I'm just going to keep going. All right? Open your Bibles to the book of John, chapter 5, verse 19. Learn to rely on the supernatural power of God. Come on, we need to learn to only rely on the supernatural power of God. That's the name of this message. Government's not going to fix it without God. Amen. Amen. Men are not going to fix it without God. Amen. Whatever you think you can fix without God, it's not fixed. Amen. The answer is God's word and God's ways and God's truth. The Holy Spirit working through men that are in covenant and women that are in covenant with him. Look at this. It says, then Jesus answered and said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself. Well, wow. Jesus has said, I can't do anything of myself. If Jesus can't do anything by himself of himself, do you think you can accomplish anything without God? Now, let's get the around. So point number one, I've got eight points I want to try to get to today. Jesus said he could do nothing on his own. He needed his father. He only could do what he saw the father do and say what he saw the father say and speak what he heard the father say. The son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the father do. For whatever he does, the son also does in like manner. We need to be in the same position. Jesus is letting us know. He's telling his disciples, I can't do anything. He's telling the Pharisees and Sadducees, you see all what's happening here? It's not me. I'm only doing what I see the Father do. In verse 20, it says, for the Father loves the Son. God loves me. I'm the disciple that's loved by God. I'm God's favorite. Amen? Amen. Come on. And there's a lot of things about me that I didn't get to ask God about. He planned it his way. He made me the way I am because that's what he chose. He put me where I was going to be because that's where he wanted me to be. He placed me in the family I was going to be raised in and born in because that was his plan. And so there's some things that we don't have control over. God has control over. So you better find out what God is saying about your life. Amen. The father loves the son and shows him all things that he himself does. Because God loves us, he wants to show us what he's doing. Now, see, Moses was walking. Now, God's doing something. God's got a plan. God wants to deliver Israel. I mean, yeah, Israel, the Hebrews, out of Egypt. God's got this whole plan. So God's working, and he needs a man. He needs a woman. He needs a believer that's going to step aside and hear what God's going to say and say, yes, I'll obey and have to have courage. Amen. And be strong and know that wherever you go, I'm going to be with you. So God invites Moses to get involved in what he's doing. Not Moses inviting God to come down and fix our mess. Golly, y'all going to get this. Amen. We're, not, we're not saying God come fix our mess. We need to see what God is doing and we need to get on board with what God's doing. But if we don't have a good enough relationship with God, we don't even know what he's doing. Amen. We're tossed to and fro. We're looking to the left and right. We're looking at everything going on in the world instead of looking towards God and doing what Jesus did. I've been teaching this. He would get up early in the morning. He would take time to get along with God because the hours he spent with God, it only took him to minutes with man to accomplish what God needed. And if we don't take the time to be with God to find out what we need to accomplish with man, we're going to be messing with man for the rest of our lives and running around in a circle, just like the children of Israel did in, Egypt, in, the, in the wilderness. Amen. Amen. 
So be aware of the talking heads that don't know Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Be aware of men and women that have another agenda except I know what God is saying. And if you don't know how to discern yet the voice of God, you need to pray, God, let me discern the voice of God. Because not every voice that speaks is the voice of God. Amen. My job as a pastor, as, as one of the fivefold ministry, is to teach you how to hear God and obey God. Yes, to teach you to do the work of the ministry. To edify the body of Christ. To follow what God wants us to do. But we need to know what God wants us to do. So right now, we need to know what his battle plan is. Because I guarantee it comes out this way. You get to know me, you be still, and I'm going to show you that the battle belongs to me. But at the same time, when we read about Joshua, Joshua went, went into the promised land and had to fight battles to get the giants off of the thrones. See, the devil doesn't just bow down. You have to put him in his place. Amen. You've got to rebuke him. You've got authority over him. He's, he's walking about like a warring lion and seeking whom he what? May devour. He may not devour us. Amen. We're going to take authority over him and find out what God is saying. And he says, and he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. When God, when God begins to move People are going to marvel. Number two, if you're taking notes, the spirit of self-sufficiency is a deadly trap. You got that? The spirit of self-sufficiency is a deadly trap. If you think you can do it in your own strength and your own self, you're trapped. You ain't even, you're not going to get started. Our dependency needs to be totally on God. We get our strength from spending time with God in the secret place. We learn that from Jesus' life, what I just said. If not, we become confident, cocky, arrogant, and we think it's us. If it is to be, it's going to have to be me. <laughs> no. If it is to be, you better find out what God says and do what God says. Yeah. See, we, we, we can't separate ourselves from God to accomplish what God wants us to. Don't think you're self-sufficient, you know, a self-made man. If you think you did it without God, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Amen. Amen. And he will allow things to happen to you so you can become dependent on him. Amen. Number three. God will not let you succeed alone. Amen. Be, do all that is written therein that you may prosper and have good success. Our success doesn't come from us alone. Anything you can do is because of the grace of God. All good things come down from the Father of lights. If you've got any good thing going on in your life, it's the grace of God. Amen? Amen. God's system and God's system... You will fail without dependency upon him. Y'all know the Bible talks about something called dead works. Dead works means you're doing things, but they're not what really God's will is. So you're getting something done, but it's just going to burn away. It's going it's to have no eternal value. You're working, but it's dead works. But when you know what God is telling you to do and you do it, it's got eternal rewards. And God gets the glory and you know what God's after more than anything? His precious possession, people. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Number four. Hey, look at that. We're moving pretty quick through here. God rewards humility. We know that there's, there's grace. Say grace. Grace is God's unmerited favor. Mercy is when you don't get what you deserve. But grace is God's divine en enablement, his unmerited favor. It's his blessing on our life, even though we don't deserve the blessing, he gives us that blessing. Amen. But the Bible actually tells us that when we humble ourselves, God will give us grace. So there is one thing we can do to 
bring grace into our lives. And the only reason it comes into our lives when we do it is because God put himself. Once God said, when you humble yourself, he'll give you grace. He says, I give grace to the humble. I resist the proud, but I give grace to the humble. Once he said, I give grace to the humble. When you humble yourself, grace is coming or he's a liar. If you need grace, just humble yourself. If you don't humble yourself, he will humiliate you and humble you himself. Amen. Because he loves you. Amen. He's not doing it to, to just expose you and humiliate you before man. He wants to humble you. It says humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God and he will exalt you in due time. Yeah. But how many people get humbled through circumstances and situations that happen in their lives and it changes their lives? You know, things afflict you so that you can learn some things sometimes because it's going to humble you. So you're finally going to call on God. You're not going to be so self-sufficient anymore. Amen. Once you realize I've done everything I can do and it's not working. Well, I guess we ought to try praying. Pray it now. We should have tried praying from the beginning. Amen. Amen. It says it in 1 Peter 5, 5. You don't have to turn there. It says God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So you can merit grace by humbling yourself. And humbling yourself means I need God. I need the supernatural. Listen to this. In 1 Samuel chapter 15, you can turn there. 1 Samuel 15, 17. Samuel's confronting Saul. Saul disobeyed God. Saul was supposed to go and wipe out all the Amalekites and do what God said because they were sinners and they were enemies of God's people. But Saul decided he was going to take some of the spoils from himself. And when the prophet went to Saul, he was the first king of Israel, and said, what is this I hear? He said, well, we saved the best of everything so we could take the sheep and everything and go sacrifice it to God. God said to wipe it out when you went into the village, but you're going to take it and go and worship him with something he said you were supposed to kill? So he says, you know what? Obedience to me is better than all that sacrifice. I don't need that sacrifice. If you would have obeyed me, they would have already been sacrificed. I'll rob the bank and give God 10%. I'll take stuff for myself and, and then worship God with, with, with some of it. It would be like a drug dealer tithing on his sales. Honestly, think about it. 17, look at what he says. And Samuel said to Saul, he's so and so, when you were little in your own eyes, praise God. Don't get too big headed. All of this stuff where some people think they're better than somebody else because of their status or their job or the color of their skin or where they were born. One human being is a human being created in the image and likeness of God, no matter where, what, what race, what color. They are created in the image and likeness of God, and they are valuable. There's no person more valuable than another person. Amen. So don't get too big headed. Don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but think soberly, is what Paul says. For God has given to each one of us the same measure of faith. Now, what you do with your faith is going to make a difference in what's going to happen in your life. He says, oh, when you was uh, little in your own eyes, were you not the head of the tribes of Israel? And did not the Lord anoint you king over Israel? Now the Lord has sent you on a mission and said, go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they are consumed. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you swoop down on the spoil and do evil in the sight of the Lord? That belonged to God. When God said, wipe it out, God says, wipe it out. It was like Jericho. When Jericho fell, he said, don't take any spoils out of Jericho. You're not supposed to. It all belongs to the Lord. It was the first of ten cities. It was a tithe that belonged to God. But they swooped down on it. One of them took it, Achan. And guess what happened? It didn't go well for him. It didn't go well for the whole nation of Israel because there was sin in the camp because one person took what belonged to God. Thinking I can figure it out myself. Let me tell you, when you give your tithes and your offerings, you know what you're doing? 
You're saying, I am putting my total dependency on the supernatural power of God and I'm taking it out of my hands. That's so powerful if you can get that. Because if you're self-sufficient and you think you can outthink God and do better than God, see how that's going to work for you. We need to depend on God. Number five, when you seek self-sufficiency, you separate yourself from God's power. God still loves you and all that, but when you're seeking yourself, the power of God is not going to work in your life. The Adamic nature comes back. It's a foolish and and tragic thing when you think you're self-sufficient and you don't depend on God. James says this, 117, you don't have to go, I'm going to read it real quick. Every good gift and perfect gift comes from above and comes down from the Father of lights. It will take more than hard work to move God. Come on. It will, it will acquire more than overtime on your job for, every, for your needs to be met. It takes being connected to God. Amen. It will require more than just education, seminars, and books for you to accomplish everything you need. If you think your education is what's going to make you prosper, and you depend only upon that, not on God, you're going to find yourself short in the end. Amen. Now, I'm going to tell you, all these things are good. Because when you take time to educate yourself, to better yourself, you're sowing seed, but you better be believing in God and following what God's plan is for that. God God wants you to improve yourself. But don't leave out the spiritual part. Amen. Amen? Amen? Be dependent upon God. In other words, if you are being educated right now, when you go to take that test, you better say, God, I need you today. Amen. Amen. Now, depending on you to help me. You promised me you'll bring to my remembrance everything that you've ever said to me. Now, if I ain't saying anything about what you're being educated in, then you ain't going to hear nothing from God. It's okay. Thank you, Jesus. It requires a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ to be able to move in God's power. Number six. To obtain, to obtain supernatural results, you must be connected to the supernatural. How many of want some supernatural results in your life? You've got to be connected to God. Yes. If you're not going to get hooked up to God, there's not going to be any supernatural things happening in your life. Amen. Again, to obtain supernatural results, you must be connected to the supernatural. God will allow you to fight naturally so that you can discover that you need the supernatural. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4. 2 Corinthians 10, 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not natural, not carnal, but are mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. So you want to fight this thing in your own strength? self-sufficient or do you want to fight it with the weapons that God has for you put on the weapons put on the armor of God pick up the weapons of God the word of God is living and powerful it's a sharp two-edged sword piercing to the division of soul and spirit joint and marrow discern of the thoughts and the intent of the heart pick up the sword of the spirit and do what God's called you to do I want you to look at this one I did, uh, this one got to me when I found it last night. I was going over some of these things, putting some more scripture to it. Psalms 119.71. Look at this. Stacey and I was talking about this last week, about a saying where we always say, oh, everything happens for a reason. And I, we, we, we was talking about that, people saying that to us. And, and I, we, I tried to think of scripture. You know, it sounds good. Everything happens for a reason. But I never found that scripture anywhere. But this is pretty close to maybe touching around that a little bit. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. So we don't want anything to just happen to us. But whenever we're not listening to God, when we're not learning God's ways and we're sons and daughters of God, the psalmist is saying it was good that I was afflicted 
so that I could learn your statutes. In other words, I must not have been keeping your statutes like I should have. And that's why this affliction came. Now, not all, all affliction comes because of that. We, we need, there is the enemy that attacks us. But do you know probably most of the problems we have is from our own doing? Our own choices, our own foolishness. Not everything. Because some other people do foolish things against us that injure us. And we didn't even have no say so over that. And the devil. Come on. Satan does things to kill, steal, and destroy us. Amen. And the world, the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. And they do things. And the world's doing things that irritate us and bring anxiety in our lives and afflict us and hurt us. That's why it says pray for your leaders that, that you'll have a quiet and peaceable life. Yeah. Because without true leadership that is anointed of God, we can have turmoil. Amen. But yet, whenever I open my mouth and say stupid things in my marriage, it wasn't the world, it wasn't the devil, it was me. And I'm getting afflicted because of my stupidity. Amen. Somebody can say amen, not just laugh at me. I know none of y'all ever did that. Take it back. You, you can take it back and it still don't get taken back. Amen. Hallelujah. Give it to God. For supernatural results, the visible requires things from the invisible world to change the, the visible world. Did y'all get that? Everything you see is temporary. Everything we don't see is eternal. The invisible world, there's a supernatural realm around us that we can call by faith into this realm that will change the visible because of the invisible. Amen. The Bible teaches this. Amen? Amen? That's why it takes faith. Faith is believing in those things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We don't see it, but we believe it. And therefore, we can call it and bring it into our, our world. Amen. The supernatural causes the sinner to turn, I mean, to, turn to a, a pure and a holy God. Once you realize you're a sinner and you can't fix your own sin, come on, can you pay a price for your own sin? Nope. nope. If you're self-sufficient, you say, I'll, I can't work this off, God. I, I got it. Don't worry about it. I'll take care. I've sinned. How many people have sinned? Oh. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory. How many people need their sin forgiven? Oh. How many people can forgive their own sin? It takes a supernatural encounter with God for your sins to be taken away. Amen. Come on, that's a supernatural work where an unholy sinner like you that was an enemy of God, God fell in love with you and sent his son to die for you on the cross and says if you'll believe in him and, put, and put, rely on him, put your dependency upon him, put your faith in him, I'll forgive your sin and give you the gift of eternal life. Yeah. What's the greatest gift you've ever received in your entire life? Is the gift of Jesus Christ, the gift of eternal life. Yes. So if you have Jesus, you're rich. Amen. 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 You're prosperous. For supernatural results, the student needs a supernatural teacher. And it's the Holy Spirit. His name is Holy Spirit. He will teach you and lead you and guide you. Amen? Amen. But if you want to be self-reliant, none of these things are going to be working for you. No grace, no mercy. It's going to be God resists the proud. In fact, the next one is number seven. Pride will keep God's grace from working in your life. I don't need you, God. Daniel chapter 4, verse 30 says this. The king spoke saying, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for a royal dwelling by my mighty power and for the honor of my majesty? Oh, my God. Help, huh? Pop it up there. I want you all to see how many mys are in there. 
I'm going to give y'all, some of y'all have got this revelation. You've been hearing me teach enough about uh, Isaiah 14, 12. You know, it says, oh, how you've fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. Oh, how you were cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you said, I will exalt myself above the clouds. I will be on the, the far side of the north. I will be like, the, I, I will, I will, I will. Pride. Satan was right there. Lucifer was a picture of pride. And we can go read it. I will, I will, I will, I will. And, this, and, and you need to know when you go read uh, Isaiah 14, yes, it's talking about Lucifer. But at the beginning of the chapter, it is actually Isaiah prophesying to this man while he's living. He's prophesying to Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar fulfills the prophecy. He's cut down like a tree to the ground. And he becomes like a beast of the field. But do you see this? This man thought he did it all. In Deuteronomy, in chapter 8, the Lord says to Israel, they come into the land, they, they end up with houses and, and fields and prosperous, had everything they needed. And the Lord said, now that you have all this, he said, lest you forget that it was me that blessed it and you thought you did it by your own hands. Come on, we, 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 when we need God, oh, we, oh, I'll do that thing till I can get what I need, God. But then, then when we don't need God, we think it's us that did it. Yeah. Don't y'all know how brilliant I am? Come on, Come on Nan, Nan knows how amazing and awesome I'm brilliant. She's been knowing me, you know, oh, since what? I was 17? A long time. I mean... When we used to work together, they had a board on the wall. I had all gold stars. Y'all didn't know how brilliant I was. But people, they, that's what they think. And don't you know how awesome I am? How brilliant? Yeah, you're, you're, wonderful. you're fearfully and wonderfully made, but you're not better than me and I'm not better than you. Amen. We all fall before the cross of Jesus Christ and compared to God. We all need to be dependent totally upon God and not on ourselves. Amen. Yes. Yes. But some people think they Mr. and Mrs. Awesome. If you got a gift and a talent that actually works, praise God. But don't think the only talents are the things that you see on television. There's a whole lot more talent than that. Amen. Amen. I saw a special, a little cut of a special. This guy is running around in a wheelchair during this COVID thing, helping people, serving people, just about wearing himself out day and night since this has all been going on. And he's in a wheelchair. Yeah. That's a gift. Yeah. Amen. Glory to God. Last point today. You can live in the supernatural when God is your true and only source. You can live in the supernatural when God is your true and only source. Y'all go to Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. While you're going there, I'm going to... Uh, just tell you a story that Jesus told out of Luke 12. There was a man that was prospering and he had so many crops coming in that his barns could not hold it. So he tore down his old barns and he built new barns and bigger barns so that he could put all of his, his uh, fruit and all of his goods and his increase in it so he could take care of himself. But God said to him, you fool. This night your soul shall be required of you. Then Jesus said, He who lays up treasure for himself is not rich towards God. All of that stuff, all of what we think we can prosper, all the, the you know, he had these barns full of stuff that he thought he'd just be able to relax and live the rest of his life. But God says, Tonight you're going to die. And what good is all that going to do for you? Because the greatest thing you can ever possess is eternal life that is a gift to you through Jesus Christ. Amen. The greatest gift. 
The greatest gift we can have is each other and our relationships. But when we have eternal life, when we lose somebody we love, we can have hope because we have the most, the greatest promise and greatest gift of all. Amen. When you love somebody and they're gone, you would give up everything you possess in this earth if you could have them back. Amen. So let's put everything in its proper perspective. And when you do get that perspective, okay, all of a sudden these things that the world is always pursuing and fighting about become secondary. Because we're just passing through, guys. Now that was good right there. So put people before your stuff. Amen. Amen. Before anything earthly. Jesus Christ stepped out of glory. God became a man and dwelt among us and died on a tree. Humbled himself. Not for our comfort. Even though he wants us to be comforted because he gave us the Holy Spirit, the comforter but for the destination and the destiny that we have, and that's to spend eternity with him and with each other. Yes. And it breaks his heart when people reject him yes. and don't believe in him and they think they're self-sufficient. Y'all made it to uh, Revelation chapter 3? If you did, say amen. amen. Verse 14. For the angel of the church... To the angel of the church of Laodicea write, These things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish that you were cold or hot. Get, get, it, get into it, guys. Come on. You say, I wish you, you, you're cold or hot. Either in or out. We, we get to just... Que sera, sera, whatever will be, will be. No, if that's how it's going to be, you know what it's going to be? It's going to be bad. Amen. Then he says this. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew you, or it says vomit, some of them. Yeah, that one says vomit up there. I will spew you out of my mouth. It makes him sick when we're just lukewarm instead of hot or cold. We're obedient sometimes, disobedient sometimes, you know, instead of like, I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to get there. I want to hear what you say and then do what you say, Lord. Because you say, listen, I don't need God's but That's what he's about to say. Because you say I'm rich, I've become wealthy, I have need of nothing. And do you not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked? We can be rich in the natural, but God looks at that as miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Yeah. Because we say we have need of nothing. I have need of God. Amen. I have need of his forgiveness. I have need of his grace. I have need of his power. I have need of his wisdom. I have need of his, his discernment to lead me and guide me. I need him as a friend. I, I need him to be my father. Amen. All of the things that he reveals himself to us to be. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire. Now, I want you all to know when he's talking about gold, he's not talking about the gold we're talking about. He's talking about a, a faith that's been tried. That's going to work. That you may be rich. And white garments that you may be clothed. That the shame of your nakedness. See when you think you got it on your own works. You're naked before God. May not be revealed. And anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. God wants you to see things the way he sees it. Amen. Let him anoint your eyes. Let him heal you. Let him clothe you. Let him take care of you. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous, get excited, and repent. Repent. Change your mind. Change the way you think about things. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. In other words, make a covenant with God. If you don't know Jesus Christ today... 
You watch it on uh, television, you don't know Jesus Christ, it's time to surrender your life and say, Jesus, I invite you into my heart. He's standing at, our, at the door of our heart knocking right now. I say, are you going to be self-sufficient, dependent on your own ability to save yourself, or are you going to come and let me save you? If you don't change your mind, you're going to be miserable, poor, blind, and naked, wretched. But he'll come in to you and you will dine with him that's a covenant, and you become a child, a son, and a daughter of God, and you'll sit with him. Listen to what he says. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father and on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches.